This is the ultimate flight controller for anybody flying a digital VTX that needs a 20 by 20 mounting pattern. It's got everything that we need for digital FPV and nothing we don't, like the analog OSD chip. Saving all that space from removing parts we're not using and then putting all the new stuff that we want in there, like a really powerful BEC for the digital VTX and a Gemini compatible Express LRS receiver. This is the flight controller that you want. It's going to be the easiest one to work with. There's no soldering for the Express LRS receiver. It's built in. I think this is the one that you're, want to, you're going to want to buy and reach for in your builds going forward. And it is just so easy to use and it has so much horsepower with that H7 processor. So what are you waiting for? This is the HD0 Halo FC. And it has a really cool story. Let's go through it. As racers, we have some concerns with uh, how much space things take up in our stack. So here's the FC stacked in together with, you know, your 4 one ESC flight controller, and then of course the Race V3 HD0 VTX. But what we also need to stack in there somewhere is a Express LRS receiver. And what we've been doing is we've just kind of been sticking the receiver anywhere it would fit, like under the camera or behind the flight controller, kind of letting it rattle around. That's not great. So what people have been asking for is, let's integrate the receiver into the VTX. That way we get everything down to one board. The problem with that is the HD0 Race V3 VTX is already really solid. And, uh, adding more to it would just make it bigger. But what we could do is we could take a flight controller and remove the analog OSD chip that nobody's using and in its place, put in the circuitry for a receiver. And that's what this is. So we take off the rather large analog OSD chip. Uh, maybe I'll find one here in just a moment. So we take that large chip off and use the extra space in a little bit better way. So that's what this is. Uh, and it's also designed to stack really, really tightly with the HD0 VTX so that you have a very easy to install uh, stack where you're not worried about any of the parts touching each other. In addition to that, there's another cool trick it's got. So on the corners of this flight controller are pads for mounting uh, addressable LEDs. And it'll actually go around and go into parallel mode where all four corners will get the same uh, addressable light pattern. Or you can change one of the jumpers on here and then each corner will be a separate uh, addressable element. So you can do it either way you want. And I think that's the only flight controller that has that design. It's pretty, pretty clever, pretty, uh, pretty useful. Personally, I'm just gonna uh, run no LEDs or I'm gonna run all of them as the same, all four corners as the same in parallel like this. But it does, it is so easy and everything you can just solder to the side if you want. Um, and and I, I really love things that let you solder to the side because it is just so much easier to work with. So that's that. Um, what else makes it special? It's got an H7 processor and H7s are as good as you can get basically at this point. So we'll have plenty of CPU horsepower uh, for years to come on that. Uh, the other thing it's got is dual antenna uh, Express LRS. So we have an antenna here and an antenna here. And what's cool with this way it's done, this is not just antenna diversity. This is called a Gemini mode uh, where each antenna can operate on a slightly different 2.4 gigahertz frequency and receive uh, the same control signal from two frequencies at once, which is going to increase the reliability of your connection quite a bit. 
Uh, to use it though, you'll need a Gemini compatible transmitter. If you don't have that, uh, then I do think that this will operate in a mode where it will use both antennas as antenna diversity. But uh, it is pretty cool to have that Gemini feature, so I do recommend picking up a transmitter module that can do a Gemini mode. The flight controller comes in two gyro configs. There's the MPU6000 gyro, which is kind of the holy grail of uh, gyros, or at least maybe it was, and I, I think it's starting to get replaced by very well implemented ICM gyros. So the other flavor of this is an ICM gyro, and that's my actually my personal favorite. That's what I've been using the most. Uh, over the years, I've, I've used tons of MP6000 flight controllers, love them. And I do have that in my hand right here. This is an MPU 6000. But what I've actually got installed in my drone is the ICM gyro version of this flight controller, because I actually think it might be a little bit better than the MPU 6000. There's some people that will disagree, and for you, you can buy the MPU 6000 version. The problem is the MPU 6000 is end of life for the most part. Uh, what that means is that it costs more money. So the real cool bit about this flight controller is it includes a Gemini mode Express LRS receiver, which is like a 20 or $25 part, and an H7 processor with a digital uh, BEC on it, all for $65, which is very low. A lot of these flight controllers sell for $65 just themselves or even higher, especially with an H7 chip on it. So in a way, you're kind of getting a free Gemini Mode Express LRS receiver with this, which is just so cool. Making this just one heck of a value for anyone that needs a high performance, easy to build flight controller. Okay, so let's take a look at what comes in the box. You've got gummies, of course, and a cable here. This is going to be for your ESC. Do note that this cable pinout is probably not going to match your ESC. This is the new Betaflight standard cable pinout, and you'll need to repin it to match the ESC that you'd be combining this flight controller with, most likely. So please pay attention to that, or you could nuke it. Also, we have two heights of gummies. I always opt for the, uh, the smallest gummy, which is this one here. But uh, if you need it, go for the taller one. This is to restrain the Express LRS antenna. So what you do is you fold it over like this, and then you put the antenna wire through the fold like that. So that's that. And then further into the box, we go, and there's two T antennas. So this is a short antenna, and then here is a long antenna. And the idea being for the short antenna, let's mount that on the top plate of the drone or close to the flight controller. And then the longer antenna, let's stick that further away out on an arm. The antenna is actually a really high quality. Um, I've been pretty impressed with this. I'm, not to knock Happy Model too much, but that's typically the antenna that I use is a Happy Model antenna. And a lot of times it comes apart right here uh, where it touches the body. This looks like it's gonna be a lot stiffer and a lot stronger than that antenna. But only time will tell. It also has some nice uh, kind of ridges on it to grip onto uh, grip onto zip ties for holding it onto an arm. So I'll show you here how I've got it mounted on mine. So this is on the top plate here, and then I have out on the arm, it mounted crisscross with two zip ties, and it's very rigidly attached. All right, let's take this apart and take a look at how it looks. 
and how I recommend mounting it. So I recommend mounting it with the Race V3 like this, where the uh, UFL is actually in the front and then it works its way back. You can also flip this around 180 and have the UFL on the back and that works okay as well. There's worn orientation where you can rotate this VTX 90 degrees and I'll show you that, but I don't recommend doing it. All right, now we got the VTX taken out. You can see how I've got my antennas routed. So we've got one antenna here going out to the back arm right there. And then we have the other antenna right here routing to the top plate like that. Also right here, I have the uh, antenna relief piece that I put around this uh, standoff. You can also put it on these standoffs in between but then I don't like that as much because it ends up changing the height of the gummies. The point is you want something to kind of cable manage and route that antenna and add, add a little bit of a strain relief. So you want to have the USB port facing down. There's a bit of Kapton tape applied to the bottom of it to provide some insulation. So it's a little bit risky, but also you'll be protected from shorts that way. You can actually you can actually use some thinner gummies on your Race V3 with this flight controller because all of the parts on the top are very uh, low profile. And these antennas here and here were placed in a, in a way that it wouldn't touch certain parts of the Race V3 on the bottom side. So you can rotate this VTX 180 like this and put it down. You could also rotate it, I believe, like, uh, yeah, like this. It's going to be a little bit hard for you to see, but you can rotate it like this and put it on if you need it like that. And that'll be a pretty good low profile stack without anything touching. And that was the key is keep all of your tall parts on the bottom side of this flight controller so that when you stack the Race V3 on it, it uh, doesn't have anything to run into. One more thing to point out on the pinout. So the Race V3 wiring in prior batches of the VTX is wired one way and on newer versions of the VTX is wired in a way that's compatible with this uh, flight controller. So there's a little OK check mark right here it, on, the, on the tag for your Race V3 if, if you can plug it directly in. Otherwise it's going to look like this, which is the one that I have. So I had to repin this to, to make it match. That's in order for this flight controller to match standards for the industry going forward. It's very likely a DJI 04 or other digital VTX is going to have the same wiring as this new pinout.